Hi everyone, welcome to my green closet. Today I want to share with you guys some actually useful upcycling projects because if you look on Pinterest or if you've ever watched a five minute crafts video, there are a lot that are either just completely useless or really stupid. But these are some upcycling projects that I actually use. And this video is in partnership with Earth Day Canada and Call to Recycle, which are two environmental organizations that help individuals and businesses reduce their impact. And Call to Recycle assists with the recycling and responsible management of batteries and other materials. So let's jump right into it. Our first project is one that I've been seeing a lot on Instagram, and that is painting over things with chalk paint or baking soda paint. I found this plant pot at the thrift store and I love the shape, but really don't like the polka dot design. So we're going to paint it. I'm using some leftover latex wall paint from when we moved in. And you can also repurpose any kind of small container to mix the paint in. Now for the baking soda paint, I've seen people do anywhere from 25 to 50% baking soda. And the more you add, the more texture you will get. Then after it's mixed up, you just paint it on. Now, when painting on ceramics, it's a really smooth surface, so the paint can come off. It isn't super durable. So you only really wanna do this on decorative things that aren't gonna get a lot of wear. And I found that it looks nicest if you paint in different directions to add more texture. And you can also use a really chunky, old, gross brush to add more texture, but I didn't have one of those. So then here is the finished pot. I think it's a huge upgrade from the blue dots. And this is an easy way to make thrift store knickknacks look more modern or to redecorate pieces you already have. For the next project, we're gonna make a container to store old batteries in for recycling. Now, if you weren't aware, dead batteries should always be recycled. It's actually dangerous to send them to the landfill because of leaching and sparking, and they need to be recycled through special programs like Call to Recycle. And the reason that we're making a special storage container is you also have to be careful how you store dead batteries. So they shouldn't just be thrown into drawers where there might be other metal things like coins or paper clips, because even though the batteries are dead, they still still have a little bit of charge in them and they can spark and cause a fire. So I'm making a recycling container from this plastic container, but your battery storage place can also be made out of cardboard, ceramic, or anything that's not metal. First, we're gonna cut a hole in the top that's big enough to allow the batteries to fit through. And then you can decorate it however you want. I wanted mine to be very minimal, so I just painted a simple little battery shape on it. And when you have an old battery that needs to be recycled, before putting it into the container, you should actually tape over the positive end, but don't cover up the chemistry information. You wanna keep your battery container in a place that doesn't get direct sunlight or extreme heat. Then when you have a bunch of batteries and you're ready to drop them off for recycling, you can go to calltorecycle.ca to find your nearest battery drop-off location. And something really cool I learned is through recycling, the metals and batteries actually become things like bicycles and golf clubs. For the next project, we're gonna turn a toilet paper roll, dryer lint, and packing paper into a fire starter. Now you only wanna use dryer lint from natural fabrics. And you just stuff the lint into the toilet paper roll, but not tightly, the air does help it light. And then we're just gonna wrap it in the paper to keep it all together. We often use these to light our stove. They work great and are a perfect way to use up these things. So then we're gonna make t-shirt yarn and crochet a small basket. And this is a great way to use t-shirts that can't be donated, that maybe have holes or stains. First you cut straight across below the armholes to make a large rectangle. Then cut strips about a half to one inch, but not all the way across. After that, we're now gonna cut across at a diagonal to create one continuous piece of yarn. And once it's all cut, you wanna pull and stretch it, which will make it roll into a tube. And then you can roll it up into a ball to use for knitting, crocheting, or weaving projects. You can make lots of different things with t-shirt yarn, but one tee will make a pot holder or a trivet or a small basket, which is what I'm making today. But if you have multiple t-shirts, you can make something bigger like a big basket, a rug. I've seen people make cushion covers. There are tons of different projects. 
Now crochet is definitely the textile thing that I am probably the worst at. So I will link instructions for you guys down below because I did not do a good job of explaining or showing this. Oh, and I also saved the little round pins that you sometimes get with your clothing on the tags to use as stitch markers. And here is the little basket I made. I wanted something that would hold just a few things that I keep on my night table and this worked out perfectly. I think it's a really cute little basket and because of the thick yarn and the thick needles, it's also pretty quick to make. The next project is an incredibly simple way to make your own envelopes from leftover paper. A regular letter sized piece of paper will fit small cards and postcards and you can also use things like magazine pages to make really decorative envelopes. There are various ways to fold them but this is the way I usually do it and you can make it the exact size you need. And I will also link some more examples of ways you can fold them down below. Making envelopes like this I found is a great way to use up extra pieces of paper and I have not had to buy any envelopes. So then I'm gonna show you guys how I made this scrunchie from an old sock. <laughs> Scrunchies are an easy beginner sewing project and also really fast to make. This is my husband's sock. It's full of holes and not even worth fixing at this point. However, while the bottoms are all worn out, the material on the top of the foot is still totally fine. If you have a sock that has a pretty stretchy top, you can even use that as the hair elastic like I am, or you can use an actual hair elastic to sew around and that will give you better stretch. But when I was sewing this up, I had so much trouble finding a hair elastic that I wanted to use. So I decided to just use the sock. First, I'm cutting the toe off and cutting along the side. Then we open it up and cut off the bottom part to make a long rectangle. And if you have longer or thicker hair or want a more puffy or scrunchy scrunchy, <laughs> do this with both socks and sew the rectangles together to make a very long rectangle. Our rectangle will then be folded in half lengthwise and I'm going to fold it and sew it around the hair elastic so it's trapped inside. Then we sew the two sides together and you have to work kind of slowly because you have to fold a little bit around the elastic and sew it and then fold the rest so you can keep the elastic in the middle. And you will end up with something like this. So then I'm going to turn it right side out and you have a finished edge with the elastic inside. And then finally we just need to hand sew the opening together. So that's the scrunchie. And you would never know that it used to be a holy sock. Scrunchies are a great project for any small pieces of fabric you might have. Then for the final project, I'm making some containers out of milk cartons. And there are actually a lot of different projects you can do with milk cartons. These are one of the few regular sources of plastic waste that we have. I've tried making my own nut and oat milks, but it just takes way too long and doesn't keep very long. So we do regularly buy oat milk and I like to find ways to use the containers if I can. So I'm cutting it at the height that I want. And to decorate it, I decided to paint it first with some gesso and then acrylic paint. But you can decorate them however you like. Gluing paper or fabric on them also works really well. And they make a great little container for kids' toys, for pens, or anything else you need to organize. So those are some of my upcycling projects that I actually find really useful. And I would love to hear in the comments if you've upcycled anything that you really like. A huge thank you to Earth Day Canada and Call to Recycle for partnering with me on this video. Be sure to recycle your batteries. Again, I will include their link down below where you can find recycling drop-off locations. Thank you for watching and thank you so much to those of you supporting me on Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.